All right, so now we're going to talk about intermolecular forces. Intermolecular forces is the topic for today. Your goal, I can describe the three main inter molecular forces so forces of attraction there exists there exist forces between molecules and gases and liquids some forces can be stronger some forces may be weaker but you need to know that forces of attraction determine how easy or difficult it is for gases to coalesce into liquids and liquids to solidify into solids or basically how much it hold that force the force of attraction holds its atom together to keep it from going from changing from different phases there are two types of forces of attraction intermolecular forces which is between molecules that's what we're going to talk about today and then intramolecular forces or within the molecules intramolecular forces is focusing on the bonds that we've already talked about like ionic covalent metallic whereas intermolecular forces are the other types of forces they're not as strong but they do make a difference and we're going to talk about the three different types of those today intermolecular forces of attraction hold the molecules together in the solid and liquid phase and allow gases to condense on cooling they also prevent instantaneous evaporation from occurring So the, the three types of intermolecular forces is London dispersion, which you may see as induced dipole force, dipole-dipole force, and hydrogen bond. So the first one, or before we talk about the first one, we're going to talk about the strength of these. So London dispersion is actually the weakest force. And if you look at the kilocalories or the kcal, it's less than one typically. Dipole-dipole is a little bit stronger, two to five kilocalories. And the hydrogen hydrogen bonds is the strongest which is 12 to 16 kilocalories now for comparison a true covalent bond which is the strongest bond is about 400 kilocalories so there is a huge difference between the intermolecular forces and covalent bonds so the first type we're going to talk about is london dispersion they result when there is a momentary shift in electron density within the molecules of an electron cloud so Basically, what it means by poles is there is a positive and a negative end. Well, with London dispersion, it's not like that all the time. It just kind of happens for a second. And the force that it causes for that second is the London dispersion force. Dipole-dipole forces is when there is a permanent dipole or a permanent positive and negative end. And the, it's said to be polar, which means the two ends are positive and negative. And the forces that appear with permanent dipoles affect the strength of the force. So this is a little bit stronger because it is polar all the time. It has those two ends, the positive and negative, the entire time. And then the last is hydrogen bonds, which technically is just a form of dipole-dipole. It's the strongest, and it only exists when a hydrogen atom is present in the molecule and it's bonded to either a nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine atom. So strength of bonds and forces from strongest to weakest, you have covalent, then ionic, then metallic, hydrogen bonds, dipole-dipole, and dispersion forces, with covalent being the strongest and dispersion, London dispersion forces being the weakest. So on your slide in your digital notebook, you will need to do some research on intermolecular forces. Some of the stuff we talked about in this notes, but the others you may have to use online resources to answer. So you'll need to answer those questions for each three types of intermolecular forces. If you have questions about any of that, let me know and I will be happy to help.